Hey guys, it's Nosejob, and today I'm bringing you a little update on Project Xenon. Um, if you're from MinecraftForums.net, then you already know what this is all about. If not, well, I guess you're just a random YouTuber, and I welcome you as well. Now, um, if you are looking at this on MCF, then you'll notice right here from the uh, latest screenshot, it looks looks pretty similar, but... Uh, what you won't notice is this over here. Um, if if you uh, look there, you'll see a ton of little control bits sticking out of the side of this. I'm not really going to count or anything, but you know, about 60 or 70 of them. And what I've done is condensed this all down through these decoders here. So now we have 17 bits to uh, control this whole area of the CPU right here. Well, actually, to control the whole CPU. And that, that'll that be nice. I'm just, you know, trying to keep the instruction set as small as possible, make it a bit easier to program. That's really the only purpose of it at this point, than to keep my uh, program memory a little, little bit smaller, smaller registers, because I'm going to be using RAM to make them easier to program. And uh, so this top decoder up here, that is for our writing functions. You have this decoder right here, 3-bit. <coughs> so that gives you unary bits 0 through 7. So we have 8 locations here. You just, you know, put uh, whatever location you want, and then you hit this right here, which is what actually writes. And then these down here, that's for the first reading bus. We'll just call that reading bus A. And then this is the enabler for it, so that's that's how your read function works. And then this one down here, that's our second reading bus, uh, bus B, and this is the enabler for that. So it's a little confusing, that right there, but uh, this is not how the computer will actually be controlled. That's just what I was basically using for testing, and, uh, you know, some people came in, played with it, and whatnot. Now these four bits down here for ALU functions... And uh, you'll notice that I have the four bits here, but I do not have a unary bit zero. This is one. And the reason I did that was so I wouldn't need an enabler. Because one of the one of the functions in this, which was an alternative subtract function, which was for y minus x instead of x minus y, and that was a bit redundant and kind of pointless. I only threw it in as filler anyways. And once I got to this, I realized, hey, it'd be a smart idea to just get rid of it completely. That way it would, you know, just be four bits there in the instruction set and keep everything, you know, nice and nice and even. <coughs> then um, our 17th one is over here, and that is our ALU's input register. And how this works, it's a single register, which is different. And uh, th the reason that is is because we have two reading buses, and reading bus A writes exclusively to the Y input, and reading bus B writes exclusively to the X input. And that has a couple small disadvantages, but the advantages by far outweigh that, because um, reading is twice as fast as it would be, say, in my old CPU, where I had two separate input registers and a single reading bus. And um, the way that works is on one cycle you would have to read to one of the inputs and then on the next cycle you would read and write it to uh, the register of the other input and with this I can do all that at the same time in a single cycle so that really dramatically speeds things up uh, it's not the fastest CPU out there but it's it's not bad either so that's how that works um, I guess I'm just going to do a little rerun I guess on uh, everything I've talked about in the thread because you know pictures don't really do it justice it's hard to actually see what's going on so I figured I'd use this to just uh, point some things out so let's just start with our ALU here <coughs> it has um, all standard logic functions and NAND or NOR XOR XNOR and NOT and uh, the way the way that works is just basically through logic gates. This this right here is the logic powerhouse, I guess you could say. It does it does some 
some other things not really logic based kind of sort of like uh, left shifting and right shifting I guess that's still logic but I don't know I don't know what I'm saying don't listen to me but like here here's our AND gate and it's actually a NAND gate but then it's inverted later on that way I could add in this control bit and then uh, once activated it just inverts it to the other side so it acts as if it was an, uh, an AND gate and then um, it comes down here through some interesting busing to our XOR gate and you can see here it's double inverted so we actually get the XOR output and then right before right under that I just use the same torches to uh, make OR you know if one or both of them are on it's going to give you an output and once again I double inverted which uh, I did rather interesting over here and so that's how that works and then we have our adders up here these are Ohm Ganesh's instant ripple carry adders they are very fast well they're very fast for what we can do now uh, there are some that are faster in later updates when we have close zone logic but um, for now this is kinda what we have to deal with but they're still really really fast from the ALU input to the ALU output over there, it can do a full ripple carry in uh, 13 ticks, 13 or 14. Either way, that's that's pretty fast compared to a uh, <coughs> a regular ripple carry adder. That would take just for the carry. That would take 32 ticks. That's not even counting it coming in from the inputs and going out. So yeah, it's it's pretty quick. And then um, back here is where we have our uh, not function and this is it pretty much acts as an alternate output it gives you the inverse of what your output would be and that is how I make functions like NAND you would enable the AND over there and then this and it becomes NAND same with XOR becoming XNOR and all that good stuff and you can see it comes in through this control bit here which activates our alternate output and at the same time it flips this torch turning off the normal output <coughs> so that's how that works um, it also has implication functions and the way those are done uh, you'll notice there's no extra hardware for those and that's because it also uses a combination of the logic that's already implemented here like for example regular implies which is uh, x implies y and that means that you will only get an output when X is on and Y is off and if you think about it a really easy way to do that is to invert the Y input of an AND gate and um, that, that's, that's pretty much it and so that's why we have these over here which are our input inverters and uh, how they were made these are just one wide vertical XOR gates so um, one of the inputs is our actual ALU input and then the other input acts as the uh, toggle for our inversion and we have separate control bits for each input there so that's that's how uh, a lot of the functions are made um, all the implication functions are made that way as well as subtraction because uh, you'll notice I don't have an extra adder here for subtraction that's because the way it works is um, the adder is activated the invert input X line is activated and uh, notting the output is activated because if you take not X and add Y equals not Z that gives you subtraction <coughs> it doesn't work with uh, negative integers but um, I'm, I'm working on that I'll probably throw in a plus one function or something um, actually at this point I don't really think I'm going to because I don't want to go any bigger with the ALU functions and have to add on to the decoder or anything so I'm just going to pass on that uh, coming back here we have our shifters and this is for bitwise shifting and you see the way this works like this right here is a right shifter and when this piston extends well first of all you'll see normally we have this little zigzagging motion up to the output here and when this extends it will block that path off 
and uh, plungers of pistons as well as pistons themselves are transparent so it will pass sort of under the plunger and come out here and you'll see the right shifter on this side will block off that path so it uh, can't sort of backtrack this way and go up and go into the next bit and really mess stuff up so then it will just come out here into the uh, next bit over to the right and then um, in front of this we also have left shifters which I realized after I got done building everything that it was completely pointless because you can just take the same value and add it together and that essentially does the exact same thing as a left shift but as you can see this these use uh, piston logic they're completely instant so it adds no delay and I figured they were already built and there's really no point in destroying them so I decided to just leave them in might as well use them since they're already there you know um, these up here in fact let me just go over here to the other side uh, these are the dual read ram cells here they're just a bunch of D flip flops with built in read functions um, funny thing is I designed these and then a short while later I found out that uh, a popular redstoner out there is really amazing by the way proper English he had already designed something almost exactly like this my dual read is very slightly different but other than that uh, full full credit for this design goes to him either way <coughs> so that's that's the memory there and you can see how it works is we have these uh, repeater loops and then the pistons activate the right function and uh, we invert from this bus here so if there's a zero here then the torch will be on and this repeater will be on so when the uh, piston drops this block down here it will pass through and uh, create this little infinite loop with this repeater here and uh, alternatively if it's on and the torch is off then the repeater will be off and this thing will just come down and break the connection and now I am getting really freaking laggy here and I don't have a clue why but whatever um yeah I'm at like okay now it's going up but I was at like three frames per second there <sighs> alright I, I think it's about time to go ahead and cut this video off I'll uh, bring some more updates as any significant process comes comes along and uh, try to keep you posted on it but uh, this is it um, I'm going to try to upload a uh, demonstration showing that it actually works here within the next few days so look out for that as well but um, yeah this is this about does it for uh, Project Xenon here hope you like it and I'll see you next time